this is the throne of Maharaja Ranjit Singh, or as he was popularly called, the Lion of Punjab, Sher e Punjab. Ranjit Singh was the king of Punjab in the 19th century, the wealthiest, most powerful king that Punjab has ever had. He was also one of the richest men in history. He was the original owner of the Kohinoor diamond, which today sits in the Queen's royal jewels. So let's take a closer look at the lion's throne. The throne itself is covered with thick gold sheeting, beautifully engraved with lotus petals. Now in Europe, royal furniture was painted in a special kind of gilding so that it looked like gold, but without the actual cost of it. Indian kings, however, covered their thrones in real gold. This throne was made in around 1820 to commemorate Maharaja Ranjit Singh's victory over Multan. Multan had been one of the most difficult provinces to capture. So this was made to celebrate this capture. The throne itself is of very unusual design. It is a fusion of um, two different cultures. The base of the throne is of Hindu design. It is made up of two tiers of lotus flowers in full bloom. The lower one sits upside down and the other one sits on top of it and is the right side up, exactly like the pedestal thrones that were used for Hindu gods and goddesses. And the shape of the throne is Mughal. It has eight sides, which is very typical of the royal furniture of the Mughal court. Mughal court furniture was always made up of lots of um, angular sides. What is surprising, however, is the size of the throne. It is not quite as big or grand as you would have expected it to be for such a rich and powerful man. I mean, you've seen grander and bigger thrones for more ordinary kings. There were two reasons for this. One was that Maharaja Ranjit Singh, in spite of his enormous wealth, on a personal level, he was not a very flashy man. He dressed very simply and he rarely even sat on his throne, preferring instead to sit on the carpet on the floor, even when he was receiving official visitors. But the other reason was that in India, thrones were mobile furniture. They would be carried with the king's entourage wherever he traveled. Even if he went to battle, the throne would be carried along. It was uh, a mark of his sovereignty. So the more transportable a throne, the better it was, which probably explains the size. They say, however, that after the death of Maharaja Ranjit Singh, when all of his treasures were confiscated, the throne had almost disappeared. Lord Dalhousie, who was responsible for confiscating Ranjit Singh's valuables, had had an eye on this throne for himself. So, he wrote off to the British government telling them that the throne was really far too bulky and heavy and quite likely of no interest to anyone in Britain. And so maybe he should just hold it back in Calcutta. He was wrong. Britain was very interested in Maharaja Ranjit Singh's golden throne. And so very reluctantly and after a long delay, Dalhousie had finally sent it off to England. But he had had a wooden replica of the throne made for himself, for his own private collection. The original, however, today sits in all its glory at the Victoria and Albert Museum in London.